all right welcome back to soul flow tv again everybody it is your host with the most just go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me now i'm gonna talk about this one before i even start this video let me say this this is the reason why you see i don't plan i don't mind working all night with no sleep sometimes sacrificing two days three days a row with no sleep just to make sure that my bread comes in and my bread is honest coming out no time for you look over my shoulder and then i don't have any time to be locked up in, inside of anybody's penile system and prison institutions and can't go to the beach and just can't be outside period man tell me when to use the bathroom and all these things me can't bother so a jamaican man who has been convicted in the united states of america for leading a drug syndicate have operated in several American cities is what the headline says. The first headline which I did not follow up says that a Jamaican man was facing a 12 year minimum sentence in US courts. But before I could finish doing that one, he has now been convicted. So the headline now says Jamaican drug runner convicted in the US on multiple charges so right now we're going to find out what led up to his charges what kind of lifestyle he was involved in what was his run-ins with the law before what got him these years in prison and how much time did he actually receive here goes shout out to Jamaica Gleaner O'Neill Wilkes who is 42 he was found guilty of money laundering and identity fraud by federal jury in Connecticut after a 10-day trial that ended last Wednesday. Wilkes, who has been in custody since 2019, is scheduled to be sentenced March 22nd of 2022. He faces a mandatory minimum sentence of 12 years in prison to a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. If he has a good lawyer, I'm willing to bet that he can get the base minimum, which is 12 years. But guess what? That's as low as they can go. So right now, anyway, I'm cut the cake here. He's doing more than a decade in prison before he gets out. Do you have a decade to spare to go sit down in anybody prison? Anyhow, mistake upon the straight and narrow, but that's not me. A judge also ordered that the Jamaican forfeit three motor vehicles that he owns, a Dodge Ram truck, a RAV4, and a Acura MDX. I didn't hear any BMWs. I didn't hear any Rolls Royce. I didn't hear any Mercedes Benz. It was the, Rav, the Dodge Ram truck, the RAV4, and the Acura MDX. He has diamonds that are valued at 50,000 US dollars, they will be confiscating those as well. He has a wristwatch that is valued at 12,000 US dollars. They will be confiscating that as well. And a US $180,000 that is sitting in a bank account, they will be confiscating that as well. So it look like him chop, chop, chop and chop himself out. He illegally re-entered the U.S. after he was deported to Jamaica in February of 2014 is what the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Connecticut disclosed in a statement. Wilkes first landed on the radar of the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation or the three-letter guys who they called the F, the B, and the I in November of 2018. After several persons, including Louis McDowell, were arrested for distributing large quantities of crack cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl in and around Bridgeport, Connecticut, according to the court documents from his trial. So somebody in his crew got pinched and ended up calling his name and then he got picked up as well. Now, all his jewelry, his cars, all his money saved up in that particular account are all being confiscated. Investigators later discovered that McDowell was being supplied by Wilkes. By Wilkes, you know. So, remember, Wilkes is the one who is um, looking at 12 years minimum. 
when them pinch McDowell, McDowell gave up information. They now know that Wilkes was the plug. The same man who was deported from the US and came back is the same man who is now seen as the plug to a major dealer called Louis McDowell. Wilkes is the plug who resided in the state of California and he used several false names including Michael LaVar Grant and Christopher Rogers among others. Both men became friends while they were incarcerated in a US prison and they agreed to work together after their release according to prosecutors. See, that's the same saying right there that sometimes prison is just like boys club. Sometimes prison is just like a place where you go to sharpen your criminal skills and to gain bigger connections. There's people that go to prison as a small time drug dealer. And by the time they've done their sentence and they're out on the streets again, they go on to move major weight because of the connections that they receive while were while they were in prison now that's only logical because you have all the criminals locked up in one place and some are doing short time and some are doing long time so the ones who are doing long time they normally test and try the ones who are doing short time and when they pass the tests they are rewarded by letting them into their organization giving them their links to the plug etc etc putting them on and they come out making even more money than they did before both men became friends while incarcerated and while incarcerated the paperwork says that both of them decided to work together upon their release to run the place concerned about a second deportation though Wilkes contacted McDowell after their release and he sought assistance with getting a US passport how would they know this if McDowell is not talking so McDowell snitched him out man now as a result McDowell enlisted the help of a relative to sell her son's identification information to Wilkes this is what the prosecutor said not me explaining how he was able to assume the name Michael LaVar Grant. Wilkes used this false identity to obtain a Florida driver's license in 2015 and a US passport in 2016, as well as he used it to travel outside the US on trips to Japan and Thailand. He never returned to Jamaica though. He was arrested on August 5th, 2019 on charges of illegally re-entering the US, passport fraud and identity theft by investigators who were concerned that he would flee the US while they gathered evidence of his extensive drug syndicate which spanned five states. They tracked him, his footprint, to five states in the US. The same day authorities in Orange County, California, who were also investigating Wilkes, executed three search warrants for residents that were linked to him and a vehicle that he was driving. A search of the homes and the vehicles revealed four kilograms of fentanyl, over $160,000 in cash. Now remember, there's also a bank account with $180,000 in cash, cash, which they also seized. When they hit the house, they found four kilograms of fentanyl, over $160,000 in cash, packaging materials, paraphernalia, and false identifications. A month before the arrest, authorities in California executed a search warrant for a box that was dropped off at a United Parcel Service shipping center and it was destined for Connecticut. So people are still trying to use the mail system to send drugs. I, I can't believe this because so many people have been caught doing this and they were able to track them and they were able to not only get the small guy but to get everybody else involved. So it's a risky way to do this. 
and the amount of time it's been exposed, you would think that somebody would say, ah, I'm not going that route. But I guess the money is so good and they actually do get through a lot of the times. So it's worth taking the risk. I mean, I know nothing to risk, nothing is not worth risking my freedom. But again, it's not my choice of a lifestyle. Now, a month before the arrest in California, executed the authorities in California executed a search warrant for this box, right? Somebody dropped the box, the box off at the parcel service office at the shipping center, and it was destined for Connecticut. A search of the box when they found it led to the seizure of six kilograms of what was suspected at the time to be cocaine. Turns out that it actually was cocaine. Six keys you're sending through the mail. That's dumb as hell. Wilkes was found guilty on one count of conspiracy to distribute and possess with intent to distribute one kilogram or more of heroin, five kilograms or more of cocaine, and 400 grams or more of fentanyl. One count of making a false statement in a passport application, one count of aggravated identity theft, and one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering. Now, when March rolls around and it's his time to be sentenced, I believe that as a immigrant who was deported and then made his way back into the U.S., then assumed five different names and operated a drug ring who people who he worked with gave him up as the kingpin of it, the main plug. When they go to his sentencing, I think the judge is going to fling the whole library at him. Remember I said it, not the book, not a page. He's getting the whole library. Watch. Smartwatch, smart bracelet said, in Jamaica, we would have gotten six months in jail and a Sunday dinner at the judge house. <laughs> better yet, Anthony MCG says, better yet, he would have given, been given a six month suspended sentence, a Sunday dinner with the judge and his family, and a date with the judge's daughter and or even the judge's wife. So basically they're making fun of how the Jamaica justice system works compared to how the US justice system works. Chuck Emmanuel I says, actually, our country was offered up as a shield to defend us from extradition against US powers, superpowers for almost one year, and there were no judges involved. PJ the original says this is how investigation starts and comes out with a conviction. You see the law that are strict and no rebuttal to get out of what he did. I hope it's life because how many people died using these drugs that he was selling? And Chuck Emanuel says pointed and accurate. Gigi says good, damn greedy and stupid. Lindell McCormick says Another useless one, instead of using your time wisely and contributing positive to society, go back to school, get a job that you could add value to your life and to society. This is what you do. Why would anyone agree to sell their own child's identity though? You hurt your own son this way with blood money. Hmm. Some people don't think about that. The money is too good. Guest 2.5 says, a woman who gave birth is not a mother, sold her own child's identity to a drug dealer. These are the demons that walk among us. How could you destroy your own son's life like this? Evil, just evil. Joe Grind says, I hope the Jamaican courts have a look at the sentence and follow the example. I know the sentence will be long because it's in the US and in Jamaica, the sentence would actually be a joke. Norma Lee says, this guy is truly a determined and outstanding Jamaican, but only for all the wrong reasons. And we're going to leave that one right there. Like I said before, 
Make sure you're earning your bread honestly. That way you don't have to be looking over your shoulder. You can sleep comfortable at night. Turn on your like a fan or your like a AC. Spread out in your bed like you own it because you do. And sleep comfortably without worrying if anybody is going to dope boys, robbers are going to kick my door in or shoot through my window to come get their dope or police is watching me, FBI and all these other things and I'm paro. You don't have to live those life. Might be broke, but you have a peace of mind that money cannot buy. And freedom that money cannot buy. What good my people? And I'll catch you on the next video. Hit that subscribe button. Almost 300k. It's SoFlow TV. I'm out. Peace.